Hi everyone, if you remember hydrocarbons make excellent fuels and we're going to use this equipment today to see what gases are given off when hydrocarbons burn. Let me explain the different parts of this apparatus. So we've got a burning candle here and the wax of the candle is a hydrocarbon so we've got a hydrocarbon that's burning and we've got an upturned filter funnel to catch any gases given off and that's connected by a series of pipes to the first tube which has got some lime water in it and that's starting out colourless. We don't say clear because it can have a colour like this and you can still see through it so a better word to use is that the lime water is colourless. Then in the next tube we've got some universal indicator which is starting out green and in the last tube we've got some cobalt chloride paper which is starting out blue. Now the tube is connected to the tap and when I turn the tap on you'll notice there's some bubbling going on in the tubes as it's drawing air through these pipes to the end. So now I'll turn off the vacuum pump and we can see in the first tube the lime water has gone cloudy or milky and that shows that the burning hydrocarbon was giving off carbon dioxide gas. The second tube, the universal indicator that started off green has turned a yellowy orange and that shows that something acidic has been made. So if you think back to previous videos, what causes acid rain when fuels burn? It can either be sulphur in the fuel reacting with oxygen to make sulphur dioxide gas, but also the nitrogen in the air and the oxygen in the air combines to make nitrogen oxide. So it's probably nitrogen oxide or sulphur dioxide that's causing that to go acidic. And in the final tube, where we had the blue cobalt chloride paper, you can see that started to turn pink which shows that water vapour is given off by the burning fuel. Quite a surprise, like you wouldn't expect water to be given off by something that's on fire. If we want even more evidence that water vapour is given off by a burning fuel, all we need to do is put a glass beaker over the top of a candle. So while the candle's burning, it's using up oxygen that's inside the beaker, and then now that oxygen's run out, the candle's been extinguished, but what we can clearly see on the side of the beaker is condensation. So that burning fuel has given off water vapour, then it's hit the cold glass and turned into condensation. What we've just seen is an example of complete combustion, where there's plenty of oxygen around, so the fuel fully burns. And in that case, when there's complete combustion, we always make carbon dioxide and water vapour. And that's because the fuel is a hydrocarbon, so the hydrogen reacts with oxygen in the air to make the water vapour, and the carbon in the fuel reacts with oxygen in the air to make carbon dioxide. So fuel and oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water vapour. So if the fuel was methane, like what we burn in a Bunsen burner, it would be methane plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water vapour. And if you're studying for the higher paper, you also need to be able to write the symbol equation. So we know methane has one carbon atom. Because it's an alkane, we double it and add two. So it's going to be CH4 plus oxygen makes carbon dioxide and water vapour. And then a little bit of balancing at the end. In some situations, there might not be enough oxygen around to join with the fuel. So it might be, for example, somebody's got a faulty gas fire or a faulty gas boiler in the house and instead of it making CO2, carbon dioxide, it makes CO. The carbon in the fuel just joins with one oxygen and that is carbon monoxide. And carbon monoxide is dangerous because it joins with the haemoglobin of your red blood cells and stops your red blood cells from carrying oxygen. So that could lead to a lot of tiredness, headaches, and in severe cases, it can actually kill you. So a lot of people fit carbon monoxide detectors in the house so that they would know if their gas fire is giving off carbon monoxide. So incomplete combustion means there's not enough oxygen, so this time the fuel reacts with some oxygen to make carbon monoxide and water vapour. So the equation for this would be methane and oxygen makes the carbon monoxide and water vapour. 
Little bit trickier to balance this one. If you need more examples of balancing equations, I'll put a link up there now to a previous video. Also with incomplete combustion, sometimes the fuel doesn't burn and you get carbon on its own, not joined to any oxygen, and that's in the form of soot. So for example, if you've been heating a beaker on a yellow Bunsen burner flame, so there's not as much oxygen getting through the air hole at the bottom, then that can cause soot on the beaker and that's unburnt carbon and that's another example of incomplete combustion. Thank you for watching.